thank you guys for staying this late a very good evening today we'll be talking about a new database for android how many of you are using sql lite in your projects everyone right so today we'll see some of the alternatives we'll talk about what are the problems with sql lites we'll see orms and other things and we'll see realm and how it can help you good evening i'm pranay uh, i work at intuit as an android developer and been doing android from 4 years I also lead the uh, Bangalore Android Developer Group as one of the organizers. So uh, let's start with a joke, right? So I am sure most of you have heard this. So two DBAs, MySQL DBAs, walks into a NoSQL bar, and a minute later they come out. Why? Because they cannot find a table. Uh, you will not find a table in Strel. So, so why do we need a new database altogether, right? So let, let's talk about a typical app scenario. So you have an app. an app will have lots of data now you want that data to be persist to work offline right you want your app to work offline that means you have to persist the data some way and the only way for now which you can think of is sql lite right that means lot of tables as your data grows the the tables will grow and as you are growing your app you realize that you have duplicate data what do you do in case of duplicate data you normalize it normalization leads to more tables right and as your app is growing and growing you find that there are more many to many relationship what do you do then you again create more tables to make to maintain that relationships right you have that metadata of many to many relationships and now you have this many tables how do you implement in in sql lite this is an actual code of sql lite right there is literally a thousand line just boilerplate code to initialize sql lite and everything in your database lot of strings for single table so this is just one table and you can see that for each row each column you are defining a string so let's say if you have more than 10 tables your file will grow more than thousand lines just for defining the table strings tightly coupled schemas so how many of you have used that uh, sql lite when uh, update so when you update your schema you have to take care of all your migrations and that migrations api is not that good and raw sql queries those are very very bad so let, let's take an example right so you want to you have couple of tables you want to get data from one table join it from another table so you use joins right so take an example of this query so you want to select two columns from one table join it on another table with a primary and foreign key and then join it with a third table this is typical sql statement now how do you write in android or how do you implement this whole thing in sql lite you create it using a query builder or you write it like this a non fancy way right so i'll say a query you will write it in select then table names column names and all your data and by any mistake if you forget a single space right you will get an exception and it will feel like breaking your laptops and which has happened quite a number of times to me as well so then what's the solution let's attack the problem right why don't we use an orm so how many of you are using an orm quite quite few that's so wrong right so orms are there to help you these are some of the orms available for android then list goes on i have listed just eight i think right couple of, couple of them are by indian developer sugar orm is uh, by satyan what does orm gives you so orm abstracts all this fancy boilerplate code which you have in sql lite which you have seen the thousand lines of code it will just abstract away with simple implementation you can use an orm and it will simplify all your queries no direct dealing with sql so no more select star and everything the one which we have seen it gives you an object mapping so people come from java world loves object and what if if your whole table or whole data schema is represented as an object you will love it so no more querying directly but querying the objects but then if orms are so good why are not everyone is using it so there are some problems with orm which comes even though they are easy to set up orm is a layer on the top of sql lite they are inherently slow most of the orms are based on use reflections and the read and write is slow compared to raw sql 
and it depends on which kind of ORM you are using. There are certain ORMs who have optimized this further using annotation processing and they are pretty fast and we'll see some of the benchmarking. Even though I said that it's, you deal with object, ORMs are not entirely SQL free. For bulk operations, you still need to write queries. And since underlying database is SQLite, you get all the problems which are associated with relational databases. So what is Realm? So Realm is a mobile database designed from the ground up for replacing SQLite and core data in iOS. It's an object data store. So Realm is based on a single principle, zero copy object store. So let's see both the things one by one. In Realm, there is no concept of tables, but everything is an object. So let's say if you have a person table in your database schema and Realm, it will be a person object. Similarly, let's say if you want to query, right, in typical SQL worlds, you do a join, but in Realm, you can treat each object is a node and it can be a, as easy as graph traversal. So you can just say realm.getA, dot get B and get C. Sim simple, no, no joins and other things. There's also a very interesting concept of zero copy in Realm. So as I said, zero copy object store. So what is zero copy? So how many of you have used cursors? Right? So cursor is precisely based on zero copy principle where when you load, when you query the SQL light, it gives you a cursor but it doesn't copy the data into the memory. It just holds the reference of it. And when you say cursor.getString or when you move to that cursor, it's actually go and fetches the data from the SQL light. Realm is based on the same principle. So when you do a get on Realm object, it gives you a pointer to that memory location. It's actually not copying that data. So if you see this example, I'm not sure if it is visible in the back, when you are using an ORM, Right? Let's say you are using sugar. When you do a read query, what sugar will do is it will read all the data from the database and create a memory. It create an object in memory of that data. So you have a replica of data. However, when you do the similar things in Realm, it will just have a reference. It will have a proxy object which is referring to that data. It introduced its own problems which we'll talk about. But with this, and we'll see the benchmarking, the read in Realm is very fast. And when I, when I say very fast, it's less than a millisecond for thousands of objects. Because it's actually not doing anything. It's just pointing you to that location. So let's take an example. So typically, all the Realm objects are standard Java objects, right? So when you query, you get the results. If you try to compare, it's all lazy loading, right? So when you try to compare the objects, those are different. But if you try to compare the data, it is same, right? So it is not actually copying the whole object from into the memory, but it's just pointing it. And at the time you need it, it goes and creates that object. So what are some of the features? So Realm is designed for mobile from ground up. It is very easy to set up. It has a common C++ core. So the entire thing is based on a C++ core. That's why it is portable across both the platforms. So you can use the same Realm data across Android, across iOS. Only thing you have to take care of, the schema should not be different, right? It is a column oriented. The data structure which they are following is B plus trees. It is very, very fast. They have optimized it for read compared to write. And we'll see that in the benchmarking that write, bulk write in realms are slow. And the query interface is very, very simple. You can chain queries together. And we'll see that as well. So enough talk. So how is Realm compared to other ORMs and other databases like SQLite, right? So we will see two benchmarking. One is done by Realm team and one I have done, right? And see how it is compared to the other platforms. So this is a benchmarking of Realm against SQLite, raw SQLite, right? And as you can see, Realm is the one which is in the red and yeah, and here the higher is better. So if you see here, the batch write, the only place where Realm is just as good as SQLite is batch write, i.e. when you are writing a lot of objects into the memory because they have not optimized it for write. But for other things like simple query, a sum or a count, Realm is really, really fast. 
and they have tested it in thousand objects. Now what I've done is I've created, uh, I've taken a benchmarking solution from DBflow, uh, a SQL ORM, and added Realm on that. And I've done a simple operation of 100,000 objects read and write. If you see here, if you see here, the first uh, first thing is Realm. Then there are DBflow, GreenDAO, ORM, right? These are again different kinds of ORM available. In case of write, Realm is comparatively slow than DBflow, correct? Because it is uh, it doesn't optimize for bulk write and take the data as in the pinch of salt. But if you see read, it's just 16 milliseconds. That too, because I'm using an event bus, it takes time from uh, the way I publish the event and the subscribe, right? That's why you are even seeing a 16 millisecond gap there. If you combine this, Realm is really fast in read, but it is somewhere not optimized for bulk writes. This is bulk write. However, for simple write, it's very, very fast again. So let's see some code. So Realm is very simple to add. It's just a gradual dependency you have to add, and it's pretty stable now for Android. It's 8.6. 86.86. Just add compile statement, and the way in which you get the instance of Realm is just say Realm dot get instance anywhere in your app. So Realm uses a reference counting in that side, so you can call get instance anytime from anywhere. You don't have to create a singleton instance if you want. It's just you can use that in your activities, and just call close whenever your activity lifecycle is closing, and they'll take care of rest of the things of releasing the memory. Now, what's the method size? And this is one of uh, one of the disadvantage of Realm as well. So Realm is adding seven one seven five zero method counts into your app. That is not that freaky compare. That's large compared to libraries like Picasso, but still manageable. But it adds a fat size of seven thirty KB in your APK, and especially in India, right, where the app sizes are important. This is one factor which prevents a lot of people to use Realm. But why does it do that? As I said, it is based on a common C++ core. They supply SO files for different platforms. So like they will do it for ARM64, they'll do it for MIPS and x86. So way in which you get, so the install size will be less compared to the size you are shipping the APK. But if you want to reduce that size further, you can do a multiple APKs for different platforms. It is little painful process to test it, but very simple to configure in your Gradle file. Where you can say that generate multiple APKs and Gradle will automatically take care of picking the correct files. That will reduce the size comparatively. So let, let's see how uh, you can create a Realm object. So just like a normal Java object, you just define a POJO. The only thing which you need to take care of is extend this POJO with something called as a Realm object. Realm uses annotation processing. So the moment you compile the app, it will take this whole thing and convert into a Realm proxy object, and they do their own optimization on the top of it. This adds another limitations that you cannot implement multiple interfaces. You cannot do your own hash code and other things. Your getters and setters should be clean. You cannot add additional logic. It will strip it out. But it gives them very fine control on what your object is doing, and very simple schema where you have a, a normal Java object, and you can do anything with it. Now, Realm support different things like primary key, your indexing, and stuff like that. So you can define uh, a, define a, a field as a primary key, and it will become a primary key. So how do you write a data? Just define an object, call the setters, and then you have to wrap the whole thing into a transaction because Realm guarantees acid properties. You have to roll it in. You have to make it into a transaction block. What you did do is just call the object, set it, just say copy to Realm, and just say commit transaction. Now, why copy to Realm is required? So you have created an object as a Java kind of object, right? You have said new person. This object is not pure Java object. It's a proxy object for Realm. So you need to convert that. So there are multiple ways to convert it. Either you use new and then do copy to Realm, or you can ask Realm to create an instance for you, right? Your wish. So very simple, if you can see, just define an object, call the setters, and just say commit. That's it. Realm also gives you an asynchronous block if you don't want to do this. So let's say, in, in this case, if, if something happens, right, if you, you have to catch the exception, and you need to cancel the transaction on your own. And if you don't want to write this much boilerplate, all, all you need to do is just, it gives you a async, async block. 
just call inside that execute method just call your setters and it will take care of committing it and in case any exception occurs cancelling the transaction so even reducing your work of manually handling the cancellation as well so what does realm object supports as i said it supports your primary key it supports all kind of primitive data types like uh, int long it supports box type like uh, long string boolean it supports null value for box type database data types and it also supports indexing so for now there are limitations of it but yeah basic things are all covered there is no concept of foreign keys in realm right you there is a concept of relationship we will see but there is no concept of foreign keys as such how do you query the data as i said earlier all you can do is take the object and say find all so if you see here what you say is realm dot where you define which class because which object you want to query so you say user class you can define certain parameters where if you want to uh, have certain conditions like the name should be john or name should be peter you can combine those operations everything what you used to do in sql world everything is possible in doing in realm you can batch all the query at once in a fluent interface so all you are saying is realm dot where user dot class find me all the users whose name are equal to john or users whose name are equal to peter and that's it it will give you a list of all those users again this is a zero copy read right so you'll get the result instantly without undue delay and when you try to access it at that time it goes and fetch the object from the memory so let's see some more examples it supports lot of lot of querying types so you can say that okay you want an age which is greater than 8 so assuming that your age is an integer type right it will do that you can also say that uh, you can also change the queries so if you see on the top you have found that from the dog find all the dogs which has age more than 8 now you get the result you can again query on the result you don't have to go again because it's just a reference so then you are saying that okay from that query return me all the dogs whose names are alex right so you can chain queries together and the interface is very very fluent so what does query data supports so it supports all the conditions like greater than less than it supports modifier so let's say if you are finding uh, finding that give me all dogs whose names are john you can say that okay john but ignore the cases so i'm adding a modifier where you can ignore whether it's a capital john or a small john or camel case anything it supports logical operations or and and we have seen that here so you can say or and and here it supports sorting directly so you don't have to implement your own sort you can say whether you want to sort it based on ascending or descending and it can work over strings int longs everything chaining queries we have seen that you can chain the queries it also supports aggregate operation so you can say that okay if you have an invoicing app let's say you have line items you can say that okay give me all the line items but give me the sum so you can just call sum and it will sum all the things and give it the results directly to you so you don't have to do lot of these things on your own it will directly supports from the database it supports both async and sync operations so you can query it in sync and async there is also a very interesting concept in realm for relationships so though there is no concept of primary or, uh, there is no concept of foreign keys realm supports relationship so you can have a realm object inside a realm object or you can have the same object inside each each other right so it creates a cyclic dependency but let's say you are facebook right and you have a database where you want a person object and you want to have friends but friends are also person right so you can have a list of persons as a friend inside a person object as well take this example so you have created a class called as email had some attributes you can create a class called as contacts and have email as again an attribute so you are having a realm attribute as an attribute you are having a relationship of email with your contacts then how do you query this very simple you can query it like you can say that find all the contacts where email dot active is true so it will fetch emails then dot active means the field which you are accessing and then you can say that what value you want so the the power is amazing right you can combine everything together you can chain the queries you can do whatever you want to do all with very very fast performances 
So, what are some of the other features of Realm? So, Realm supports JSON directly. So, you don't have to convert. So, in typical ORM worlds, what people do is they convert their JSON through JSON into an intermediate object and then call setters over all their uh, uh, ORM objects. And then supports directly mapping of JSONs into the database. So, you can get a JSON and call save and it will save all the fields excluding anything which is not in the schema. Right? So, if you have JSON has more elements, it can exclude those. There's a how many of you love concept in uh, uh, content providers where it notifies you if you, ob you put a cursor observer, content observer, sorry. Right? Same things are missing in a lot of ORMs if it doesn't give you a cursor, uh, a content provider. Realm supports something called as notifications where you can just subscribe for a database change notification and you will automatically be notified regardless of your data being changed in whichever activities. Right? So, you have two activities. You register for a Realm listener. Right, a database change. You go to a second activity, modify the uh, the content. You come back. You can register for that listener. It will notify you that there is a data change. Right, and then you can update your UI. So you don't have to write all those boilerplate codes. Encryption support. So a lot of apps like banking needs an encryption support inbuilt on the on the device itself. So a typical solution is you use SQL Cipher, or if you are using SQL Lite, you write your own encryption logic. Make before saving, you make sure that you are encrypting all the data. Before retrieving, you make sure you decrypt all the data and the whole operation is slow. Realm is supporting encryption and decryption by default in the database built in. So, you can use a 5112 key, I think, to encrypt it. So, when you create an instance of Realm for the first time, you can pass those parameters and it will make sure that the data which is being stored is encrypted. It supports adapters, so people who love list views, recycler views, there is an adapter directly to bind those views to Realm. And as I said, it's a cross-platform, so it supports the same data can be migrated to iOS as well. I don't know the use cases, but yeah, it just supports because the core is common. And they have a robust third-party add-on, so it's an open source. The core is not open source, but they have a pretty good interfaces and expose. So there are people who have built a lot of add-ons on the top of it. Little less for Android, but lot of add-ons for iOS. So yeah, all the good parts. Then, what, what's the catch? So there are certain limitations of Realm which you should know about before deciding whether you want to use that in your project. So I lied to you; it's not entirely a NoSQL database. It's an object database. Each object is a tightly coupled schema. So if you are changing an object's structure after releasing your app, you have to provide a migration script. They have a very good support for migration, but still you have to write some code to do that. The core is, the C++ core which I talked about is currently closed source. They have promised to open it under Apache license, but still there are speculations on the dates and people have speculations on when that will happen or whether it will happen or not. So people who like open source more might not find it interesting. And as I said, the the concept of zero copy, though it looks great, it has some other disadvantages. Because the object which you are get, getting is just a reference, it's a mutable, it's not a threat safe object. So, uh, that's one of the problems. Then realm objects cannot be passed between two threads. So, what that means is, if you are querying a realm on your main, on a background thread, you cannot use the results on the main thread. So, typical use cases is, like you query a query for certain content in the background thread and then you want to tie it with an adapter on the main thread. That's, that will not work. But you can query the data on the main thread because it is so fast, you will get an ANR. And there, there is uh, some support for co coming for Rx into this. I think they have released it yesterday. I am not aware of it so far. The writes are slower compared to read. And it doesn't, okay, it doesn't support auto-incrementing. So, if you have primary key concept where you want to auto increment the key automatically at the time of inserting the data, it doesn't support it, but it's fairly easy to write it on your own. And of course, the size of the APK. So, if you are too worried about the size of the APK being added because it adds 0.8 MB, uh, well, it's not for you. How they have some of the addition, uh, additional things like Realm browser. So, it's a, it's a Mac utility. So, you can pull the Realm files because Realm is just a file which is getting stored on your uh, 
So by default, the directory is context dot get uh, cache dial. I think so. You can use from you can pull the data from there. You can use this browser uh, to browse the data and see for any disparency anything which you want to see. There is also a Stato plugin available for that, where you don't want where you don't have to pull it manually, and you can use Stato to uh, use this. So who else is using Realm, and is it production ready? So Realm is backed by Ycom. Uh, there are a couple of big apps which are using Realm both on Android and iOS. Some of them are Dust Smash, then you have Zappos, Pinterest, and in fact Intuit is also using it in one of our apps on iOS. So yeah, uh, that would be pretty much all for me. Thanks. If you have any questions. Thank you. That, that that was pretty detailed. Uh, you told about that there's a zero copy concept, and uh, when objects or the rows are read, they're not copied into the memory. So I'm assuming the data is saved on the secondary memory, which is private to the app. Yeah. And when you query, uh, the references to the physical memory uh, or address of those objects of those rows is taken to you, and it is uh, goes through them one by one, right? Kind of. So every so, time you uh, are trying to get fetch a row, it's going to the secondary memory, pulling it and get it, giving it to you. Not kind of, it's not fetching it. So mm -hmm. you have the pointers for that memory. Every time you want to display that row, when you say, okay, so you got the reference. Now you got the realm object reference, you say get. The time you say get, it goes there and pick that data and comes. So back. I think the only uh, major advantage we will have is in case of, let's say, a list which is displaying 200 rows. Instead of fetching all those 200, getting into the RAM and paging through it manually, Realm will only get, let's say, five. Yeah. Because if you if you're of implementation, five, yeah. display five, and then how are you do pagination? That will have a significant impact yes. on improvements of. Okay. And moreover, if you see right, apart from memory, perf uh, apart from read and write performance, uh, the interfaces are very clean, right, compared to SQLite and compared to a lot of ORMs. It also gives you some of the inbuilt methods which are not there in ORMs, uh, not there in SQLite if you want to have like encryptions and other things. So there are certain advantages on that side, certain advantages of that side. And in total, it's a, it's a good thing to try out in case it suits your needs where you don't have a tightly coupled schema as well. Like even though it is not schema-less, but still better than SQL. Yeah, because the size is like uh, quite a disappointment, 780 KB. So uh, if you're not al already providing a lot of good things, it's hard to justify the size. Yeah. So and as your app grows, it becomes tough to replace a lot of things in later point. So, thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the SQLite advantage was like I can prefill the data and ship it for the app. Can I do it? With yeah. The definitely. So you saw that I showed you that that Realm browser. You can modify the Realm file and supply it with your uh, data. Your okay, app. so I can ship it the prefilled yes. data. Yes, thanks. But, uh, that was one of the concern which we had with uh, Sugar or I'm or something. Yeah. Like that. So one of the thing which I've seen with doing those things, like I'm doing it one of for one of my apps, mm -hmm. it can burn you out. Uh, I've seen OnePlus two phones failing miserably on copying those database from your uh, uh, from your asset folders to back into the memory. Mm -hmm. So you need to be little caution about it, but yeah, they have the support for uh, supplying the Realm files because it's just a flat file, right? So you can supply it. Okay. Uh, I have a question here. Uh, Sorry, where? Uh, oh yeah. Uh, have you evaluated any other uh, NoSQL DB for Android? Yes, definitely. So there, there is a Couch DB Lite, pretty powerful database, entirely NoSQL. It's just a, a light version of Couch DB on your phones. It makes sense to use it if you are using a CouchDB on your backend. It also gives you a nice fancy sync feature where your data can automatically sync between your uh, servers and your clients. Hello. It support the Swift, uh, Swift language also? Yes. So it supports on iOS both Swift and Objective-C. Okay. And it is, I, I, and you can see that more people have used it on iOS. The first version of Realm which came out was uh, they have very recently released an Android support. Initially, they launched it with iOS only. 
So they have pretty solid uh, uh, architecture for iOS. You can go and read more about it and replaces core data very, very uh, awesomely. That is what I have heard. Hello. And uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah. can what all uh, encryption mechanism does uh, Rian support like? So uh, we use SQL cipher for normal SQLite and, uh, and what all it has to encrypt our data. So I have not done the encryption but what I read from the documentation is they support some kind of encryption where you can pass a 512 size key. Yeah, and some GPG key which we use for SQL cipher. I think so. Yeah. The same okay. So we need to encrypt our data, we need to put our data and encrypt it. You don't have to do anything. So when you okay. when you call that get instance you have seen, right? When okay. not get instance, there is a overloaded function there, overloaded method there. You can pass the uh, the secret, the key and it will take care of encrypting and decrypting it automatically. Okay. So no, you don't have to write a single line of code. So if you pick that data, if you pick that Realm file and use it in Realm browser, you will see all the encrypted data. If someone wa wants to access, if someone tries to access like the real table, so how easy it is? It is uh, so it is same like SQLite, right? It will okay. you, it will be stored on your app's uh, memory only. So nobody else should be allowed. If you have a rooted phone, then anyone can pick that file. But because the content will be encrypted, it might be useless. Okay, fine. Thanks. Hello? Yeah. Hello. Uh, can I get the JSON back from the object store? No. So you can use JSON on uh, with tying it with the object to get that. So there's a little tweak which you need to do to, uh, to work it with JSON, but you can directly get the JSON out of it. Excuse me. So, does this Realm handle it or still you have to handle that like? Uh, it's kind of handle it and it's a uh, little, little complicated there. So, as I said the Realm objects are not thread safe, right? So, you cannot share, share two objects with two threads, sorry one object with two threads. So, on each thread you have to create a new instance of Realm. So, what Realm will do is it will log the data for you. So, if you are trying to insert a data it will log that and if you, on the same time if you are trying to read it, it will create a copy of it to you. Okay. Right? So that way they man maintain the consistency, but that adds up to unnecessary copies of data mm. and creates a little more size, but they try to purge it when they do again a write. Okay. And there is one more thing like uh, we tried one sample in Realm and there is one thing like uh, we are getting some data from the database back on the main, main thread. So, like, if we are having a lot of database, there are, it's not ENR, but uh, in the log there is like uh, 31 frames skipping, 30 frames skip, skipping. So, my doubt is like it may create problem while doing animations. So, is there Correct. anything like uh, the loaders has like the, it do something on uh, say back background thread, but actually it can give you on main thread? Back. No. So for now I am not aware of it. Uh, I have heard in the morning from Anup that they started supporting this thing for Rx. But the way in which I am doing this is in case I know that I have lot of data to fetch, I fetch it in a background thread, convert, now loop through that data, <laughs> put it back into an object which can be shared on the main. Uh, that even we thought of then, but actually if you, uh, like these validation whatever you have given is not Actually, Entirely true. Yes, yeah, then that's because true. there is more boilerplate for GC to clean up. Yeah, definitely. So I think they, uh, th th it's a very, very well-known issues for them that it doesn't work across the thread. And very basic example was for list view, where typically you do a, a, a get on a background thread and then pass this whole thing to an adapter, right? right. An adapter will always be on a main thread. Right. Uh, it doesn't work. And as you said, like uh, Realm has their own adapter. So does that? handle that thing for you or will they uh, do it on the UI only like? So they will do it on, you have, so see the adapter is just for you to uh, access that realm objects properly. Okay. Ultimately you have to pass the results to the adapter, the results you will fetch it on a UI thread, thread. Okay. right? So it depends if you thread, if you fetch it on a background thread you will get an exception. That realm objects cannot be passed across threads. Okay. Um, so uh, you said that uh, Realm supports importing from JSON. Yeah. So, in case of relationships, is there some restrictor, uh, some format that is that I must implement? Yeah. 
or can i tweak the way in which it forms a relationship so only condition for relationship is that anything which you are adding which is non primitive or should extend realm of that's it so if i have added emails in the contact email should extend object okay. otherwise if you are defining an arbitrary class objects it will fail but uh, what about let's say there is a person and we have a email as a relationship so while importing what should be the structure so that realm imports the Consider relationship it same like your json structure so it should be a recursive nested structure yeah. so can i make it work with some other structure for example let's say on the back end it has a, a uh, different kind of structure different kind of database and they are comfortable sending uh, an id of person inside an email object instead of a nested thing so can i make it work with that or will it be very slow in insertions i i don't know about it but if i take a guess you have to write lot of code to do that so basically you cannot directly convert into a realm object you need to have an intermediate object with json mm -hmm. and then copy your data like save okay looping over it. so i mean is the is realm import doing some a lot of optimization while importing from json or is it very trivial code which even if i write will be as efficient as it is i have not seen the interface okay but okay. i think they are doing lot of stuff because practically they'll convert the whole thing without you needing to convert it into a intermediate json right mm -hmm. object okay so when we read a object they have pointer for only that object or for each every entry they will have pointer and when we read the specific property they will get the information from i think they have it for each object not for entry because each object is represented as in the file some way so they will get it and then Uh, the, uh, the stat that you showed that the, the realm was where uh, it is taking utility less time. So that is just for uh, doing the zero copy thing, or it's after like when you get the data and doing something with the data after that. Also. It's a cheat, so it's just a zero copy. Just a zero copy. But if you see, right, uh, uh, take an example what Aman gave. Like in case of uh, a list, at max you might be displaying five or six. right but you might have fetch all 30 40 in an, in the memory in case of realm you will only fetch that part so that way it is so it's a kind of cheat and it's not it so that's why i said take the data as on the pinch of salt right because you can see that clearly certain certain functions like batch write db flow and green dow is clearly doing pretty fast operations yeah so in, in case of uh, write right it's writing the object in the memory right so they, yeah so they they are not optimized it for write because they have an intermediate proxy class when you extend the your pojo with a realm object they convert a proxy object use some annotation processing thing to convert into the format they want so they have an overhead of doing converting that whole thing into their own objects no self nothing else and works completely offline yeah one second sorry yeah uh, since it since it provides the java representation of objects right basically and there is a high tendency that as developers kind of we go and put a lot of interdependencies like uh, an object including another object and so on like a kind of a tangle tree or something like that so in uh, one thing is about how do is there any recommendation in terms of the design for the whole thing because it's a free form yeah. and there is a tendency to go like a wire uh, that is one thing and as when the dependencies increase right how would be the performance of the system overall sure so uh, there is no recommended way of how do you design the object it depends on totally on how you want to maintain the relationships and comes to the same question when you design a sql how do you design a table so totally up to your database schemas on how you want to schema to be now it will definitely affect the performance because right it's slow so if you have too many relationships into an a single let's say person you have a user you have a address objects and couple of things each of them will take the time but the read will be very fast again because it's just having a pointer and only access the data when it's need so even though 
you have six or seven different kind of objects inside one single object, you are just getting a pointer to those locations and you are not entirely copying the whole thing into the memory. Hello. So I, uh, there were questions about uh, thread support in Realm. So I have been using it and I can just confirm that uh, since 0 0.84, they have support for background uh, syncing and background fetching. So they have uh, all fun they have functions like uh, uh, find all async, find async. So since 0 0.8.84, they have this function. And uh, all the li they are uh, notified through real uh, listeners that they have. So you can use background fetching. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. So if you are more interested in like diving more deeper than what I have told you into the realm like how they have implemented zero copy and all, there is a nice talk by this guy called as Christian, he is uh, uh, Android developer at realm, he has given that talk in NYC, uh, Droidcon New York this year. So just search for his uh, name and you should find it. Thanks.